All right, looks like we're live. Welcome, guys. We'll be getting started. Looks like about three minutes or so. So we can take the time while we wait to go ahead and enter in today's giveaway. Hit that link you see on the stream there. Save you a little time later. All right, looks like it is one o'clock, so it's time to get building. Welcome everyone, Black Six from BZ Power here, doing another uh, live build this week. We got three Star Wars sets here, all different variations of Jedi Star Fighters uh, from three different periods of the Clone Wars, um, all released in three different years. And uh, yeah, we're gonna take a look, compare and contrast, see how the builds are, compare them to a couple other Jedi Starfighters that I've built in the past and still have assembled, and uh, see how they all go. So we've got the oldest set is uh, Yoda's Jedi Starfighter. I believe this is from 2017. Um, it appeared, I think, only in like one episode of the Clone Wars uh, TV show, or one arc of that show. I believe it's the one where um, he learns uh, how to become a force ghost and meets the ghost of uh, Qui-Gon Jinn. It's a very awesome episode arc and uh, it's definitely a later design of um, you know the Jedi Starfighter starting to look a lot more like a TIE fighter with the, the cockpit. Uh, the wings look very TIE interceptor-ish there and I can see there's some different play features and such on the back. Next up, the second oldest set from 2018, only a couple years ago. Um, probably the first one we're gonna build because it is the oldest in universe is Anakin's Jedi Starfighter. So um, I forget the exact model, but this is like the Delta Seven uh, Jedi Starfighter. 
not the one you see in the Clone Wars, uh, since that had the Ashmeric cockpit on one of the wings, whereas this one is this in the center, which I believe, I'm sorry, I might have misspoke. It's not the one you see in Attack of the Clones. In the Clone Wars TV show, pretty much all of the Jedi Starfighters have the droid socket here, which makes a lot more sense from a physics perspective. Um, so yeah, this is kind of the iconic uh, yellow and gray paint job that uh, Anakin had in the TV series, at least in the early part with uh, when he's still flying the Delta Seven, we got you know uh, the stud shooters, got landing gear, and of course it comes with his trusty Ashwick RTD2. I think all three of these sets come with RTD2, um, so we can't get enough of them, of uh, that lovable Ashwick. And so here we go, the last set, the one from this year. Uh, I guess the reason we're building uh, all of these sets today because Lego was kind enough to send us Anakin's Jedi Interceptor since they had just released Anakin's Jedi Starfighter a couple years ago. I guess they wanted to tweak the name a bit. Um, so this is more in line with um, Revenge of the Sith. Um, but I think he was flying this in later episodes of the Clone Wars as well. Uh, the Ada 2 version of the Jedi Starfighter. Uh, and it looks like the, we'll have to check it out now, it looks like the, the minifigs of Anakin are slightly different between the two, but I'm guessing R2 is the same. Um, not a lot of features that it really calls out there other than the spring-loaded launchers and the fact that the cockpit opens. But we'll, we'll take a closer look at that in due time as we, uh, we get through these. So let's go ahead, get rid of the giveaway link for now. Uh, you'll still be able to enter and get up our little info block on the set. So as I said, we're gonna be kind of building these in chronological order. Um, so yeah, we're gonna start with the set from two years ago, 75214, Anakin's Jedi Starfighter. 247 pieces retailed for $30. Um, so, like, you know, I think uh, all these sets are fairly similar price range and uh, part count. Um, but obviously, you can see that Star Wars tax in play. If this was like a city set, it probably would only be a $25 set. Um, but, you know, it's, it's about the set itself more than just the part count. And especially if it's got some larger pieces and things like that, it can definitely make up for a higher price. Doesn't look like there's too many stickers. I see potentially a couple of stickers right in the front there, maybe some on the tail. But overall, um, it may be a fairly sticker-free set, which would be pretty cool. So let's open her up and uh, check out what we've got in here. up here for reference. All right, so it looks like there were a few more stickers than I thought. Looks like about seven in total there. Uh, mainly we've got the Galactic Republic insignia on a couple and then some different stripes and colorations on the uh, Starfighter. We've got our nicely folded instruction booklet. And then it looks like three bags. No loose parts or anything like that. Just instructions, the bags, and the stickers. So let's get our build trays here and start building. Yeah, I, said, I was talking about building these in chronological order. Now I'm trying to think. I was making the comparisons to uh, Yoda's Starfighter and um, being very similar to a TIE, the, the more similar to the TIE Fighter design. But if uh, the Jedi Interceptor was the one Anakin was flying in Revenge of the Sith, that would be the last one chronologically. So maybe we'll do Anakin, Yoda, then Anakin. All right. So 
Starting out with our minifig here. I guess this would be General Anakin Skywalker. So we'll start with uh, the back face and back printing. He's got an angry expression. He's got his uh, little communicator there. You can see uh, like the, his kind of armor that he wears during the Clone Wars. I do like how they've gone back and been re releasing these Clone Wars sets without the Clone Wars style animation because uh, those sets really turned me off to Lego Star Wars back in like 2005 to 2010 or so, whatever that the show was airing originally. So there he is with his hairpiece, his lightsaber. He's a pretty good job capturing Anakin. He's got like a, a little printing on the legs there for his uh, robes. All right, find our first part here and we'll get our picture in picture set up. Hopefully have fixed our issues we had last week where um, my st uh, camera stand here just decided to crash um, and to fall off my desk in the middle of the stream. That was a little awkward. All right, there we go. So how's everyone been this week? Another lovely week during a pandemic. Fantastic episode of The Mandalorian this week. Same as every week since March. Yeah, it's pretty much, pretty much has been here, Paleo. At least right now, though, we have uh, new episodes of The Mandalorian for another couple weeks. So one thing I'm noticing right off the bat is we're adding this little clip here near the bottom, which I'm guessing is going to be to attach the lightsaber um, so that when you're swooshing it around, you don't have to worry about somewhere to, to th throw that so it's not in the way. Very welcome feature. I think, uh, they're usually pretty good about doing that on a lot of these sets, so it's good to see that trend continuing. Uh, outside of the Lego world, one of the more interesting pieces of news I saw was, um, you know, speaking of the pandemic, since of course everything these days is related to the pandemic, unfortunately, but uh, Warner Brothers' decision that all their 2021 movies will be available on uh, HBO Max 
in addition to uh, theatrical releases. I think the biggest part of uh, that announcement for me was the fact that one, Matrix 4 is, is still a thing and is coming out next year. Um, they're making another Mortal Kombat movie and they're making a Tom and Jerry movie. Um, I was unaware of any of those things and that was probably the, uh, the biggest thing for me in, uh, in that announcement. It's like, wait, they're making another Mortal Kombat movie? Did they learn from the last ones? Yeah, I will say the one movie that was on the list that I, I'm kind of hopeful for is uh, Dune, um, which uh, I've, I actually just started getting into this year. I read the first Dune book uh, last month, the month before. Well, yeah, it's, it's all blurring together, kind of like you said before, Pilio, the same, same as every week since March. Um, you know, I've been aware of its existence for a long time, obviously. It's not like it's a, a new series or anything. It was always one of those ones that, that I, like, I knew if I started getting into it, I was going to get sucked in. Um, and I knew that one of my favorite authors uh, was writing books in that series, Kevin J. Anderson, who uh, I discovered thanks to Star Wars. Um, he wrote the Young Jedi Knight books back in the day. Um, and then um, the Jedi Academy trilogy featuring... Luke Skywalker after Return of the Jedi doing some uh, some Jedi things and starting a new Jedi temple and, and all this and that um, and uh, I love a bunch of his other books that he's done highly suggest you check him out if uh, you enjoy science fiction and fantasy um, his saga of seven sons is uh, pretty fantastic um, but anyway, yeah, so he, he's been writing Dune books with Frank Herbert's son, Brian Herbert, for years. And I knew that, and I'm like, man, there's so many of these, though, and if I start reading them, I'm just going to like get sucked in. Um, but they actually brought him and Brian Herbert in as consultants on the film, on uh, the new Dune movie. And I'm like, all right, if, like, you know, the two people who know the franchise as good as anyone else who's alive uh, are being involved with the film and they seem pretty promising and, and hopeful about it and maybe the film will be good and if i see the film i'm gonna want to have read the book first so i've read the first dune um been reading other things have not gotten to any of the sequels yet but once I have some uh, time in my reading schedule, I definitely plan on picking those up and getting into, I think Dune Messiah is the second one. So yeah, looking forward to that. So I'm hoping the movie is good. Like literally my, you know, I've kind of like know a little bit about Dune just because of pop culture and everything. But the only Ex like first-hand experience I have is, is reading the very first book. I haven't seen, you know, the uh, movie from the 80s. I haven't seen the sci-fi channels uh, miniseries from the 2000s. So this is kind of all, all new to me and so far been pretty, pretty awesome. And as I talked about all that, we are just about done with the first bag, it looks like. I think this is probably gonna be a pretty quick build, sort of pretty, pretty quick stream today. All right, so here we go, our first bag. You can definitely see the frame of the Delta 7 going in here. And yeah, so we got some landing gear that folds down on the front, kind of a nice feature. 
I can see this is going to be the droid socket with the 2x2 two two round jumper and a couple of grill tiles for R2's feet. And uh, I guess that means Luke, or no, not Luke, <laughs> Anakin's going to be sitting back here somewhere. So uh, yeah, that was first bag. Time for bag two. Hey, little Roka. I don't know if I have any uh, LEGO Dimensions pads to spare, LaRocca. <laughs> yeah, just hit me up on Discord. Um, I think you, uh, you never replied to the last time you won something on the stream, so I think I have a set to send you anyway, so you can, uh, can bundle up some things and send them out to you. And hey, maybe you'll win something on today's stream. You know, I have two things that you can get. Yeah, I know it's like, that's obvious for you. Oh yeah, same address. But I have definitely been burned in the past. I'm like, oh, I've sent this person things like uh, dozens of, of times. I'll just dance yeah, under the same address. And then like, hey, did you get the thing I sent you? Like, oh no, I moved two weeks ago. I'm like, oh, oops. So I, I just always, that's why you always get the, the email when we do these giveaways and uh, always ask for your address just in case because better safe than sorry Some uh, snot brackets going on the side here. Some snot action on the side of the cockpit. Got a little control panel here. I think this is just kind of a generic design because we'll put that on the main camera. Pretty sure it's been used time and time again in Star Wars and in other sets. Kind of fleshing out Anakin's cockpit a little bit there. Yeah, so you posted those pictures about it. I think, I know I have some version of Luke's land speeder hiding in my closet of sets. I don't know if it's, uh, when you were uh, showing off, or if it's another one, but that definitely looks like a fun little build. It's kind of funny in my, you know, being a, a Star Wars fan. Wait, me, Star Wars fan? What? Over the years, I've have been picking up a bunch of different Tatooine sets. Haven't gotten around to building a new of them. I was kind of thinking, like, hey, if we have, you know, a slow period. Um, in our live builds, I can do like a Tatooine-themed stream. I've got a couple of the different cantina sets, and like an Obi-Wan's hut, and like a land speeder. And then this year they uh, released their Master Builder series, Most Eisley Cantina. I was like, oh, well, I guess that'd be the better stream to do, is the big UCS version. Thanks for taking the wind out of my sails, Lego. Jeez. I'm not sure uh, when I'll ever get around to building uh, the other smaller versions. They even use snot to get studs on top. <laughs> Doesn't that seem a little backwards? I guess if it works. Second sticker. Looks 
looks like uh, Anakin needs to bring his Jedi Starfighter into the body shop and get his uh, paint job touched up a little bit better. Well, that's interesting. So we're making like a little uh, storage compartment here. So you can see the two stickers we've put on so far. I think they line up pretty well and work well together, but this guy is uh, only attached by a couple of studs. Leave this tiny little compartment here. I'm not sure what all you can fit in there. I guess because maybe it's like the extra stud shooter ammo. It's got the stud shooters on the wings, so I guess you could put, fit some extra studs there. Since we do already have that clip on the bottom for the lightsaber, so it's obviously not for that. acting as our rear landing gear. A little disappointing that there's no actual rear landing gear, but it also means we have to put down our front landing gear there so we can get it to stand up. That works out pretty well. Fairly sturdy. As long as you put the, the quick hinge directly down, I assume if you put it out a little bit, so then when you push it down, it falls, which for display isn't bad, but if we're still building on here, you're gonna want the added sturdiness. Yeah, I'm definitely, definitely with you there, LaRocca. Like, when they, when they add storage on the ships, it makes so much sense, right? And it's like, oh, okay. They do it, and then you get to a ship, yeah, where they just like ignore that whole idea. And it's like, wait, but we, we know that you're capable of this, so why don't you just do it on everyone? Like, yeah, does a, uh, a one by one plate with a clip really add that much to the budget that, um, you know, you can't, can't make that fit into the set? has the benefit of making the walls to the cockpit and also making it a little bit roomier than if it were plate or bricks built up um, and also a little sleeker on the side thanks to the tiles. Now as of right now at least there's these nice holes in the bottom. You can see my finger coming through there. I'm guessing those probably aren't going to be closed up. You know some of the sets with the um, spring-loaded missiles definitely do have storage like um, yeah usually it's the bigger ones which I guess makes a little more sense like the Razor Crest has storage for its extra spring-loaded missiles um, rip Razor Crest and uh, I guess I, yeah it's mainly the big ones I think the Tantive 4 um, set have that, so they do that sometimes, but yeah, definitely not consistently. Alright, so now we're making the tail section, which is also done s with snot. It has some nice stickers on these 4x4 four four plates. Getting a little tail stripe here. Yeah, 
Yeah, all your x have random lasers floating around. Yep, I know what you mean. See, that's why I have all these drawers. I guess you can't see them in frame because they've got the picture in picture up. But I've got a set of drawers right off screen here that like all, I put all the just little extra pieces that come and sets in. And then if the drawers get too full, I sort them into like the rest of my collection. But I have a drawer somewhere in here. Let's see if I can find it. Like literally just full of uh, spring-loaded missiles. <laughs> stickers to do on these 2x4 curve slopes. Make sure I put them on the right way here. <laughs> the water blast effect, that, well, that works. All right, so we've got our wing piece here that's again attached via snot. And we have the second piece that goes on the other side. And thanks to some lovely spacing, makes a nice tail. So it makes it nice and sturdy. You can hold it by said tail thanks to the snot techniques. Sandwiches that in. Hey, Box Commander. Oh yes, all this stuff we just did, we get to do again. But we already did it, so we don't need to do it again. All right, looks like we only are doing one of the wings in this bag. Kind of interesting that like, we mostly have the fuselage done now, just need to do the Canopy, I guess, is the main part, but it uh, looks like we're only doing the starboard wing. And then the last bag will have the port wing and the canopy and any other final details. of different normal plates and wedge plates coming together to make our wing here. Rather convenient for them that they don't have to worry about where to put the astromech droid. Well, and our last 
glass sticker it's going on that two by two round tile the galactic republic insignia not to be confused with the imperial insignia which is you know just completely different Technic plates here, so it can attach to the main body. And here is our stud shooter. One of the ones that's attached to a little one by two plate to make it easier to uh, integrate into these builds versus the handheld one. And yeah, that will be attaching onto there shortly. Looks like we have to build an engine first. Which actually looks like it's got some uh, different technic construction going on here. It's kind of cool to see. Axles, some bushings, some pins. So yeah, making use of the Technic axle connector inside this engine piece here. And it's kind of interesting that the result, it's like not perfectly flush, which I guess I'll assume is accurate to the source material. I honestly don't remember for sure. All right, so that's it for bag two. Just got to attach our wing. I do kind of like how you know, the engine piece wraps around those two con Technic connectors. So you definitely had to add that, I think it's definitely easier to add the engine on before we attach the wing. And uh, yeah, starting to look like a Jedi Starfighter there. All right, of course now it's very lopsided and can't stand up straight. D2. Oh wow, this is some really bad printing on this dome here. Definitely like an error. I've definitely gotten plenty of R2D2 figs that are fine. Um, but yeah, you can probably even see that on camera. That blue line around the bottom of his dome. Um, that's not just the camera or the light. It is really that angled. And you can see going around like just how bad that is <laughs> oh hard to need to need some an oil bath or something there needs to go see the droid mechanic And it's kind of funny because, um, yeah, as you can see on the, the boxes, every single one of these sets includes R2-D2. So we'll be able to compare all of the printing and see just how bad it is. Just proves why he avoids using his neck extender. Yeah, definitely appreciate it. There's, 
it, it just just so happened, like I was already planning on doing the stream, but I saw in the uh, in PC Power Discord earlier this week people talking about the Jedi Starfighters and uh, the craziness in their designs and how they uh, defy physics with the astromechs and trying to fit them into the fighters and yeah if you look in I think it was one of the incredible cross sections books I think is it is it this one or is it uh, one of the other versions that yeah if you look in the incredible, incredible cross sections book literally the astromechs have a their like head comes off or is that the Naboo oh, it was the Naboo Starfighter that's what it was where their head disconnects so it can fit in the body I'm like what it's like when they were designing those ships they were only thinking about the dooms of the astromechs, not where the bodies fit. Uh, seems like a bit of an oversight. But yeah, that is also why in the, uh, the Clone Wars TV show they made this new version of the uh, Jedi Starfighter that has a an astromech slot that an astromech can actually reasonably fit in and looks plausible versus what we saw in Attack of the Clones. Which, uh, in doing my research a little bit for this set, I was just like looking at all the different versions of the Jedi Starfighters and, and I guess it checks out, as far as canon appearances go, the only version of that first Jedi Starfighter that we ever see in the canon, I believe, is, uh, is Obi-Wan's in Attack of the Clones. Because as soon as the animated series came out, they switched to the newer version. And that's also the only set we've got gotten that has the Delta 7 with the uh, droid socket on the side. So I thought that was really interesting. Because every version of Obi-Wan Starfighter has it on the side, but all the other Delta 7s we've gotten over the years have had it in the center. Just about done with our Jedi Starfighter here. About time to put up our giveaway link. So if you have not already, you can go ahead and enter that. We'll be picking our first winner shortly. All right, so now all that's left is throwing the cockpit bubble around. All right, there we go. And then we've got our stud shooters. I guess we'll probably turn off the picture in picture for a minute. Let's see if the instructions actually show storing it. So they do show you can put the lightsaber on that clip. Huh. They don't actually show storing the extra ammo in that little compartment. So yeah, they show, they show that you get extra ammo. And they show that it shoots out by pushing down there. And then they just, so yeah, just clip the lightsaber in. So it definitely seems like a, uh, a missed opportunity. All right, so let's put our crooked R2 
in here. We can clip on Anakin's lightsaber as instructed. Alright, and there we go, our first Jedi Starfighter of the day. You can see the landing gear in front retracts all right i mean it's not like amazing um it's really not the worst landing gear we've gotten and then it can go down and uh, yeah the bottom of the uh, of the starfighter looks kind of ugly um you don't really ever see the starfighters from the bottom that often they definitely try to hide that because uh, again physics does not apply to these ships and uh, yeah, so it can uh, swoosh around. It's a little difficult to hold from the back because it's got these curved slopes on the side, which from an aesthetics point of view I like, but do make it a little hard. Can kind of, you can hold it by the tail, I guess, but I would be worried of uh, it breaking off eventually. So I guess you can hold it there. That, that works not too bad. And uh, yeah, so obviously R2 has to fit in there sideways but he can just pop off his dome and rotate it 90 degrees so he's still looking forward as you fly around. Anakin has got uh, plenty of room in the cockpit there. I do like the little headrest that he's got uh, with a little cheese slope and I uh, can really easily pop him in and out. Not a fan of, uh, if you look through there, you can see the engines at the bottom. So there's some pretty noticeable gaps in the side um yeah which i don't think i'm a big fan of overall um obviously yeah, this is a fairly slim and sleek ship uh, so compromises have to be made somewhere um and, and you know i get that but not not a huge fan i'm just trying to look at the geometry down here like it's a big empty gap between the engine and that the gap in the cockpit. I feel like something could have been done to fill that in um, and still have the wing panels attached properly. So if it really bothers you as well, um, I'm sure you could modify the design. As Anakin's hair got turned around. I'm sure you can modify the design a bit and uh, get it to be more to your, to your liking. Um, as much as I'm gonna complain about it right here, I'm probably not gonna actually change it um, when I put this set on display. And then uh, the surge compartment I was talking about earlier that they don't show off in the instructions is this little slope here. It's only connected on by two studs. And so presumably you can fit the extra ammo for the stud shooter in there. Although I think you'd really have to uh, to like stack them together or something to get it to fit in there, let's see. So if you stack all four of the extra shots, it fits in there pretty well. And then uh, you can put that on. And it rattles a little bit, obviously, but not too bad. Definitely a nice solution. I think if they didn't have that little one by two cheese slope in there, it would be a lot easier to fit these in and you wouldn't have to stack them necessarily, but not a big deal. Um, I definitely like that there there is storage. Like uh, LaRouk and I were talking about before, it's definitely a good thing to have. All right, so that was 75214, Anakin's Jedi Starfighter. So let's go ahead and do our first giveaway. So we can turn off that link. We'll turn off that overlay for now. And find out who our first winner is gonna be. Lord Oblivion, congratulations. You have won a Death Trooper buildable figure. 
So we'll be getting in touch with you to uh, get you that prize. All right. So next up, move us off to the side. We're going to go to the oldest set we've got today. Yoda's Jedi Starfighter 75168. Interestingly enough, this has 262 pieces, which is more than the 247 and 248 of the two Anakin fighters, yet this set only was uh, $25 versus the $30 that the uh, two yellow starfighters were. So it's more pieces. Um, a character you probably see less often in sets, although obviously Yoda has appeared plenty of times. Um, but it's more pieces for less money. And a pretty unique looking ship design that I'm uh, excited to build. So like we talked about before, this only appeared in like one arc of the Clone Wars TV show. So it's pretty awesome that that was enough to get a set of it, because it's a pretty cool uh, little starfighter, very unique to, uh, to Yoda here. Um, definitely has the beginnings of some Thai influence and design in it, with the cockpit and the, uh, the wings look very Thai interceptory. So, looking forward to checking out the set. Alright, so we've got three bags, yet again, an instruction manual, and a sticker sheet has six stickers here, although if I had to guess those black ones, black and red ones on the right are probably interior details, so you can, if, if you're going to skip on any of the stickers, those are probably the ones you can. Uh, more easily skip on and not lose any of the big details. Jedi Master. All right, so we have got Yoda with his lightsaber and his lovely olive green head. Very nice printing and details. Uh, much better than the uh, the original Yoda minifigures, I think. And uh, you know, I think the original ones were sand green instead of olive green. And so I think I think the actual shade of Yuta is somewhere in between those two shades. And of course then we have the, the sculptures that use sand green instead of the olive green. Um, so it's kind of, uh, Lego still isn't sure which color to use. Kind of would have been nice if instead of the four long bar for the lightsaber, if he had gotten a three long one, um, since that would be more accurate to his lightsaber, since it's a, uh, a shorter lightsaber. But, you know, that would have been a, a new element that they would have had to add uh, to the uh, manufacturing pipeline. So I definitely understand why they did not do that. Ooh, excuse me. Yeah, there are 
already using the um, orange, not orange, green lightsabers and like all these other Jedi minifigures with the four long bars. So to add a three long and trans green would have been a whole new thing in the production line that obviously they did not have the budget for. So we're starting off with a very Technic heavy build here, which is kind of awesome to see. Like so far, literally every single piece we're adding on here is a, a Technic element. So kind of curious to see um, how far we get in the build before we add non-technical element. There definitely are normal system elements in this bag, so it won't be forever, but at least for the start here. So finally, on step 12, we're adding our first system pieces to this set. It's pretty impressive for a Star Wars set. So yeah, now we're, we're promptly covering up Technic frame with all system parts. Although looking at the box, there will definitely be some Technic showing in the end. Although if they just had uh, some black two module axles, it would be a lot less obvious. This is interesting. Apparently these axles sticking at the ends here, you have to make sure they are lined up properly. Probably because of whatever we're going to be attaching to them. Would have been kind of nice to know that earlier when we were assembling them, but... to be lined up so we can attach these two Technic angle connectors here. They can be close enough and then you just kind of finagle them together. And so this is going to be to get some of that kind of compound angles on the wings on the Starfighter. Oh, 
Oh, so that's kind of interesting. Those uh, stickers I was talking about earlier, I was saying were ones you can probably skip. It looks like they're supposed to be the engines or something along that line. I'm going on these one by three curb slopes that were sticking on the back. I assume is the back. visible these are in the final build. But they certainly seem like they may be pieces that if you don't like stickers, you don't have to put those ones on. You won't be missing out on anything. Obviously, if you don't like stickers, you don't have to put any of them on. But some affect the final product more than others. So now we're building a little assembly that's got the two 1x4 uh, spring-loaded launchers in it. Looks like those are going to be fairly well hidden in the build, which I always appreciate. Anakin Starfighter there where they are very obvious. Although with the, the stud shooters at least, you could fairly easily take them off if you so desire. adding on some engines with some boot bottom pieces. So I'm not sure what those um, stickers that are necessarily supposed to be representing. like, hey, we wanted to add some more detail, so here's some stickers. Right here are some two module red axles that will be visible in the final model and be very annoying. the bag and I have an extra piece. That's not a good sign. Ah. These need to be out by one point. That 
is it for bag one. I'm not sure what uh, this old guy is. It was in my bag of parts, though. I don't think anything was uh, missing. Was it, none of the parts were like, broken or anything. Oh, that's where I put the minifig display stand. That's my extra parts. Alright, well at least that mystery solved. Okay, bag two. Get to see how this R2-D2 is printed. This one is uh, pretty crooked as well. Maybe I've just been missing out on how crooked R2-D2 heads um, are over the years. I feel like some of the past ones I've gotten have definitely been straighter. But um, you can see I that they both have different degrees of crookedness. It's pretty disappointing. But otherwise, they are identical. like in uh, bag two here we're going to be working on building up the cockpit. Lots of lovely dark green elements as well as the you know, usual Star Wars shades of gray. Uh, we've got a trans black window piece, but based on where we're putting it, at least half of it is going to be blocked. So it's not like it will allow you to just see out the back, unless that little tiny little spot above it is still going to be exposed. These little details we're adding, like these curve slopes here, and we add some inverted curves here to kind of give it a an orb-like shape. And obviously, it is usually pretty hard to uh, do spheres in Lego, so they're kind of doing the best they can with a bunch of different techniques.
Hmm, okay, uh, so it looks like um, that window piece I put in up before might be there so Yoda can look behind him and see the bottom of R2-D2? Oh, we're covering up the window a little more. Oh, no, we're covering it up completely. So I guess they just wanted to use that panel piece and just opted to put it there in trans black because that was a color that was currently in the available inventory. They could have pretty much used any color that would have matched the color scheme and someone decided, hey, trans black seems like a good choice. It certainly blends in to the build and you just kind of don't even look at it or, or think about it there. Just an odd element as you're assembling. I mean, kind of right next to are these two one by one round bricks and trans red that don't seem to serve any purpose either. They're just kind of purely filler pieces. to attach our TIE Fighter canopy piece. It's starting to look a bit like a, a bit like a TIE Fighter, honestly, but uh, yeah, a bit like a Jedi Starfighter. pieces have stickers applied. How many steps are they going to wait until we're supposed to put them on? So we assembled them in this step, but we're not supposed to put the stickers on until bag three. I'm just trying to check because if you look at the stickers, you can see the Galactic Republic insignia there is a little higher on one side, so I'm just trying to see which side should be facing up. Before I put the stickers on. I think it's easier to put the stickers on now while the parts are loose and not assembled. So I'm not sure why they're telling us to not do it until later. It's not like we're going to be building anything that kind of goes in front of part of it. And so you have to worry about uh, you know, overlapping elements or anything like that. All right, so there is the roof of the cockpit. Looks nice and cozy for our Jedi Master.
that's the first kind of bits of the wings going in there. We're just about on to the third bag. I think as we're adding these blasters to Yoda's Jedi Starfighter, like even though he has wielded a lightsaber in combat, that like you'd avoid using the blasters on his Starfighter. You'd find other ways to uh, get his enemies to defeat themselves. All right, so it's uh, coming together. We're definitely looking like a, a little starfighter at this point. Obviously, we're going to be bulking up the uh, the wings a bit. Um, but we've got our opening cockpit that Yoda can sit in, and we've got our droid socket in the back. Very nice and compact. Right, and for the third bag here, they're actually telling us that we get to build the same wing assembly twice. I am noticing though, um, especially if though we're building the same wing assembly twice, that the main body here does not have a clip or anything uh, for Yoda's lightsaber. So we're talking about how awesome it was <laughs> that they did that on Anakin's, and they proceeded to drop the ball here with Yoda. It's like, really, guys, come on. Yeah, I mean, there's still time. Still got this whole bag left. Um, but just uh, looking at the parts we've got, I'm not seeing any any clips here, so. I'm trying to think about and remember what uh, what Lego news we've had this past week. There hasn't been a whole lot, I don't feel like. I mean, there are definitely some sets from next year that have been starting to appear online, uh, which is always, always exciting to see the what is uh, new and upcoming. Um, we did have the announcement of the 25th anniversary of LEGO Games, which I thought was kind of cool. And they're doing a podcast to kind of digging into the history of that, so I'll definitely be listening to that. And uh, on, I guess, more of the 
Bionicle side. Um, there's an interview that the French fan site Bionifigs did with Greg Farshti. That was really nice to see. I think they did a good job there. And then uh, the Masterpiece group on uh, Flickr, and I think they have a Facebook group as well, is doing a contest for the month of December to build a bug, so you should check that out as well. So we're donating a Baze Malbus buildable figure as the prize for that contest. So I do like these wings, have a good bit of Technic in them. But it is, as far, a pretty straightforward build. And we're you know, pretty much doing everything uh, four times. Although slightly mirrored. Which is actually kind of reminiscent of uh, building an X-Wing, I guess. of wings together uh, so then at least there will be a little bit less of repetitiveness but I think we got the parts that is going to be about it for this build so as soon as I finish this step we'll put that giveaway link back up so for anyone who has not entered Still have a chance to do that. I'll have two more stickers that need to get applied as well. But those are going to be uh, slightly different because of how the mirroring works. All right. Let's assemble our pairs of wings. So a little two module. Technic half beam and then a two module Technic beam. Keep them firmly attached to one another. And then these go in these Technic connectors there. That well, looks pretty marvelous. So now I still have these stickers to apply. Yeah, and actually this is where it's telling us to apply these ones. Or these ones that we did like about two bags ago. Oh, 
These red ones are kind of a pain because it's not very clear like where the top is and how they're supposed to be oriented. So these ones makes a little more sense to not apply them until they're on the set, especially since it's a round part. This can be a little more tricky to line up, especially if you have to make sure they line up with uh, the studs. Stickers there. All right, yeah, definitely uh, nowhere to store the lightsaber does look like. Uh, let's get rid of our picture in picture so we can show off the set. So R2D2 can hop in the back. My neighbor can turn on his weed whacker right outside my window. Thank you, neighbor. control panel for Yoda. Like, literally, nothing. Um, so I guess he has to use the force to control. And he can hold his lightsaber across his hands there. Um, I guess that, that works. It fits in there, technically. It kind of goes back to what you were saying earlier, Little Roka, about, yeah, you just have to just put it in the cockpit. Um, so you can see he's got these, like, one by two cheese slopes on the side that his hands rest on. Uh, that would have been a great spot to use some control panels or like the four studs right in front of him. You could have put a cheese slope with some control panels, but they chose not to do that. Um, but then uh, that goes down, fits in there nice and snug. There we go. And then the wings can fold open. They can only fold open so far because of the mechanism. Although once they're folded like that, you can still kind of give a little bit. So I'm not sure that they're supposed to be um, like that open. I think it's more supposed to be like at a little bit of an angle. But uh, yeah, this is uh, pretty nice, very swooshable. Um, I feel like it's easier to hold than Anakin's here, because he's got these curved slopes on the back, so it tends to kind of want to slip out of your hands, whereas it is a little blockier back here, so you have a good good grip to hold this while you swoosh it around. Um, the uh, the spring-loaded missiles sh stick out a bit from the back. I mean, that does make it easier to, uh, to launch them. Um, and, but I do prefer the look of the set with them not in here. Um, it looks a little more empty from the front because you have this open there, but not having them sticking at the back. I do like the, the look on the back. There's not a huge amount of detail, but it's got the, the two big engines. Um, it's got like the, you know, the round bricks give it a little bit of texture, and the stickers help. Um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty nice. Like, it's got little blasters in here. These, uh, these red, two module axles that would definitely stick out um, both there and in the back here. Although this isn't a two module, this is like a, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, there's a 12 module axle that runs pretty much the entire length of this. Um, I don't believe that has come in black for a number of years. Whereas the two module axles we do know, like there, there are some sets you'll build that will have them in both colors. So you definitely know they could have put those in black there, and that would have helped. Um, but otherwise, I definitely like it. Um, you know, it definitely has a, a TIE fighter or TIE interceptor vibe. Um, you can also see how it's similar to the other Jedi Starfighter design that we're going to be building uh, next. Um, but also it's kind of X-Wing-ish with like the four wings, and while you can't lock them all the way out. It's almost like you can lock the S-foils in attack position, and I do like how they kind of fold up as well to be nice and compact. Um, so the, yeah, my main main complaint here is that there's no spot for uh, Yoda's lightsaber. I guess if you take out the spring-loaded launcher, 
uh, missiles, you can fit his lightsaber bar in there. Um, so there's a, a possibility. Uh, it does, yeah, it can fit in the cockpit, but it's not really, not ideal by any means. Yeah, let's get that in there though. Load up our spring-loaded missiles again. Shake my camera around. Nope. All right, and we've got another winner to pick. So let's turn off our giveaway and find out who our next winner will be. Helio, congratulations. You've won a K2SO buildable figure. So we'll be getting in touch with you to get you that prize. All right. So we got one more set to build. Let's get to it. So this is the one that is uh, currently available. So 75281 Anakin's Jedi Interceptor. Um, I suppose it's still technically a starfighter, but they call it an interceptor to not confuse it with the set from three years ago that over there that we built. Um, 248 pieces, sells for $30, includes Anakin and R2-D2 yet again and uh, yeah, this is like the Ada 2 Ac Actus I believe the Ada 2 Actus uh, fighter oh and we can play it in uh, Star Wars the Skywalker Saga which unfortunately has been delayed a bit longer until next year so yeah it's got one more piece than the uh, the iteration over here that we have but same price, obviously it's a different model of ship, so curious to see. Ooh, unfortunately our sticker sheet is very folded, that is a bummer. Um, not a lot of stickers, the main ones are for the insides of those wing panels. It looks like we have some for some Nexo shields, control panel, and a little Galactic Republic insignia. I'm gonna see if I can like put this under my part tray here to flatten that out. Uh, we do have three bags of parts, yet again, common across all three of these sets. Not a lot of surprise there, but we do have a loose part. We have the cockpit canopy piece, which is nicely printed. So, so, so glad we don't have to put any stickers on that. Also interesting that the instruction book for this set is uh, significantly bigger than the other two. You can see these guys are about the same size, and this one's like a good two inches taller. Uh, despite again being like just about the same number of parts as the other ones. Also interestingly, we build both figures right off the bat here. Compare our Anakin minifigures. Let's 
So the one on the right without the hair is the one from the A to 2 version. Uh, you can see that this one has a fleshy hand to indicate that his hand has been chopped off. Um, which I guess was the case with this figure too. Right, because he lost his hand at the very beginning of the Clone Wars. I guess he just happened to be wearing two gloves this, in this uh, instance. Um, the legs look like they're exactly the same. The faces look the same, um, but the torsos are slightly different. The belts are the same, but the, I guess, more Clone Wars era Anakin has that little like, kind of armor piece uh, over his chest, whereas the Revenge of the Sith version does not. And uh, yeah, the backs are slightly different as well. Actually, the backs are very different, different utility belt. Uh, he's got his robes here versus the armor, but the, uh, the faces are very much the same. So two similar figures, um, but I guess they're like 75% the same, same hair, same head, same legs, uh, just different torsos. Of course, the torso is the biggest piece with some of the most detail, so it kind of sets them apart a bit. And then let's see how the printing on this R2-D2 is. So this one, uh, yeah, still a little crooked, um, but it's more crooked on the back. So from the front, he looks okay, but on the back, there's definitely some crookedness. I guess I just never paid close enough attention to R2-D2 heads. Either that, or I've just been like super lucky in the past, maybe, um, and I've just never noticed how bad they uh, they can be. All right, let's get our picture picture back on. I'm gonna have to look at all of my other R two D two figures after this and uh, see how they compare. should have plenty of them floating around, so. Have I just been missing it this whole time? So whereas Yoda Starfighter took us till step 12 to get to a system element, took us to step 11 here to get to a technic element. Well, it is interesting. We've got these half beams that were attaching on. I'm not sure why they decided to use two half beams instead of a full beam. We've had, I think, the same structure Yeah, technically we've uh, saved them uh, one on the part count. <laughs> I don't know how important that is or not. And like budgets and stuff when you're designing a set, but uh, that would have been the case here. interesting how the builds of three different Jedi Starfighters all differ.
Looks like Anakin might have a bit more of a uh, recliner chair in this go around. Looks like it was a little bit more angled back than some of the previous ones. All right, time for our first sticker, a little control panel here. Get our sticker sheet back under there, try to flatten that out some more. So there is our little control panel. Interesting little design. I uh, don't remember how accurate it is or isn't to the source material. I'm not sure how often you see inside the cockpit that the controls of the Jedi Starfighter. And I'm sure you do at some point, but I guess it's not uh, something that's very noticeable. Oh, hey, look, a black two module axle. <laughs> Only we had had a couple of those in Yoda Starfighter. That's an interesting mechanism here. So I was wondering what this was all about. Um, so we're putting this on here, and then that can flip. It's like, what is this for? The answer is for the canopy. So I feel like these canopies have always been uh, a bit of a pain because usually to take them off you just have to like literally like remove the whole thing but because of this little technic mechanism it can actually flip open now so that is a, a major improvement that i'm happy to see one thing that is kind of bugging me so far about the design is you've got these stud shooters here and it's like this uh one by four space between these stud shooters and this um like four by eight plate that you could fit a brick in that would have like filled in this gap, but instead we have this gap that you can like fit a finger in there. Um, I don't think there's really a way to close that off later. We've got the front of the uh, cockpit in, which turns, which is a little unfortunate. Oh, and already we're done with the, the first bag here. Now with the boat bottom pieces, it's a little unsteady. I'm sure it'll be fine. So it looks like bag two builds the port wing, and bag three is gonna build the starboard. Kinda wanna build them both at once, but we'll follow the instructions. I really don't feel like having all those bags open at once. So, we're not even two hours into the stream, so we got plenty of time. All right, so now we get to focus on the wing. And yeah, so this thing is literally a cockpit and two wings that get attached on. Okay, so maybe that's what the gaps are here for. All right, I'm gonna have to stand corrected. Those gaps are there because they've got the Technic pinholes and that's going to be where the wings attach. Okay, all right. I apologize, like I said, designers, you win. Like you always do. With your amazing set designs, usually.
I guess, okay, so yeah, the wings are going to be different, that's right, because uh, this one, I believe the one we're working on now is the one that has the droid socket in it, so they are not going to be completely identical. We get to see how the set designers manage to try to fit R2-D2 in a very thin wing. of an interesting idea of using this um, I guess like a door plate that has click hinges but normally it's a one by four plate with the male click hinges on it but here we're using these ones with Technic pins and that's going to allow the wings to uh, attach to the main fuselage or the main cockpit module and allow them to move Got a Nexo shield piece here that is getting a sticker. I'm not sure what the sticker necessarily represents. Maybe that's like Anakin's squadron or something. The clones that he uh, directs in battle. kind of interesting but I definitely uh, noticed it right away so I thought this looks like it's supposed to be the Galactic Republic uh, symbol I'm not sure why we had to put it on a one by one round tile and why that can be printed but if you look closely you can see it only has six lines coming out of the center Whereas the normal Galactic Republic insignia that we have here has got eight lines radiating out. Uh, I can't say I've ever paid super close attention to the insignia. I guess I've paid close enough that like that immediately struck me as odd and out of place. 
I don't know, like something was off there. See, I'm not sure if that is like an error in the design of the set and the, the decal for the set, or if that was like just kind of a gradual changing of the insignia as the war progressed. Uh, as we got closer to the time of the empire, they went from the eight lines to the six lines. Of course, now I'm going to have to go on to uh, Wikipedia and find out for sure. Interesting details on the underside of the starfighter. I guess they are supposed to be little uh, lasers. At least one of them is. The other one just kind of goes. Looks like it's like a little, just a little interesting little detail on the underside here. can see this one like points out so it can shoot but this one just kind of goes into the fuselage so it's like just like a little greeble detail for detailing sake. And I assume this clip here is supposed to be for the lightsaber bowl. We'll have to see if like it's used for anything else. Okay, two more. Black two module Technic axles. And these ones will hardly even be seen in the final model. Although if they were red, that would definitely sh uh, stand out pretty, pretty readily. Just kind of like on Yoda's ship. <laughs> I'm going to keep mentioning it because it is annoying. Finally, the physics defying droid socket. It attaches to the underside of the wing here, makes it look super ugly from the side. kind of an interesting design here. I thought we were just going to put a lightsaber bar in between these to attach the wings, but I can see why uh, that would not have worked. So we're actually attaching four clips here, and then the lightsaber bars are going to attach to the clips, and the wing pieces can attach to those once I put the stickers on them. Nice curvy stickers, which I think we're going to start with the curvy ones and get them out of the way. One. 
is the other. Okay, so then they just clip on. Can tweak the alignment a little bit to make sure they are even with each other, and then they can fold up and fold out. Technic pins connects to our cockpit in theory. There we go. And uh, yeah, starting to get a half a Jedi Starfighter. Yeah, we can fit an R2D2 in this side of. And he only looks super stupid from the side, but that's okay. All right, now I get to do this all over again, just without the uh, socket for the droid.
Sweden's definitely have a lot going on with all the different wedge plates and stuff. Uh, that attach all the different little details to them. Definitely a lot of great little techniques coming together to make it all work. Totally skipped a step. Oops. Gee, I should have known better considering I've already built this before. <laughs> interesting so to keep the two sides symmetric you're essentially building that dro same droid socket but it just does not uh, connect to anything which ends up leaving this big empty space on the underside of the wing which definitely seems odd I assume it is kind of to um, balance things out. Because otherwise, once you assemble the Starfighter, it would just kind of tilt over to the R2-D2 side all the time. Especially since it seems like there is uh, no landing gear. So we just have uh, some stickers to apply. We're going to be wrapping this set up. Do, 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 do. stickers. We go put our giveaway link back up one last time. So while I finish assembling this, uh, you guys saw we added a bunch of new sets to our what would you like us to stream next list on the giveaway. Um, as I said the last time though, we are going to be doing the micro fighters next. Um, I know not everyone is a big fan of those, but Lego did send us a couple. So we are going to be building them. Um, should be a pretty quick stream at least though, for those of you who are not fans. So take that as, uh, you know, 
A little balance there. Can't win them all. But at least uh, it'll be a shorter stream. And then the other sets that were on there are sets from my personal collection that we'll be building afterwards. We are still waiting, I think I mentioned last time, for the latest Winter Village set, the Elf Clubhouse. We requested that from Lego, um, but it has, due to its limited availability, um, we have not gotten our copy yet. We might not even get it before uh, the holidays, unfortunately. That would be very sad. Um, but it might happen. I think it's pretty difficult to load the spring loaded launchers. Um, but other than that, that is pretty much all the sets that we've got from Lego in 2020. Um, so yeah, we'll be going back into my own personal collection after that to see what uh, we can build. All right. So going back to our earlier discussion with LaRocca, not only does this have a place to store the uh, lightsaber if I don't drop it. Can also has another clip on the other side to store the extra spring loaded missile. Might be better to put it the other way. So it doesn't run up against that one by two. It has the cool mechanism to open the cockpit. It's uh yeah so I'm guessing yeah see so he cannot be sitting up straight so I, I mentioned earlier looks like he has quite the recliner here that is because he needs to recline a lot to fit in there uh, so it's hard time for him to access the controls but hey not, not a big deal um, and then uh, yes yeah, so we do have the click hinges that attach the wings and I was wondering why we have these snot brackets here and that is to keep the wings only going down one one click to get the right uh, profile shape here and then obviously these guys pop up with their little solar panels kind of their future TIE fighter look and then it is uh, very swooshable easy to hold on to nice and sturdy you can hold on to it by just one wing and swoosh it around R2D2 does look super silly coming out the side there even more silly is the empty droid socket on the bottom with no hole in the top um, and yeah I, I guess that you know that's done so that when uh, you put it down it can balance on the surface so that is three Jedi starfighters that we have built today um, but we have built some others in the past I don't know if all of them have been done on stream well, I think we have it's only two so I know we built this guy, Obi-Wan's Jedi Starfighter with the hyperdrive ring. So this is the, um, the version we were talking about earlier from Attack of the Clones where the droid socket is on the side and actually in this case there is no droid body, it's literally just the head on a turntable. Uh, so they cheated a bit there. So kind of wanted to compare the two um, to see there's definitely a lot of similarities in the, the fuselage there um, and the wings and even not quite how the wings attach though. Um, this one is on some hinges that use a click hinge piece to stop them from going down too far whereas these ones are permanently attached in an angle Technic. Um, but there's definitely a lot of similarities. You can see that this version will not work with the hyperdrive ring because it is lacking these axles here although you could probably modify it if you wanted to although you would likely lose the little clip for uh, Anakin's lightsaber but that'd be kind of cool that you could do that um, I think I do like using these curved pieces on the cockpit better than uh, the tiles on this one um, but they're both they, you know, they both use snot to get that done and then have the tail fin which is similar on both as well um, you know, all in all, I think they both work out pretty well. They both have the little stud shooters there. So I guess technically, you know, this would probably like fit 
in the hyperdrive ring. Uh, although not quite. Um, I guess because of the, the design of the engines, are they a little more forward? Yeah, you can, so you can actually see that Obi-Wan's Starfighter is a little bit longer and the way it's designed, the engines on his are a bit further back. So this one you have to do is some more modifications on Anakin's to get it to work uh, with the hyperdrive ring, sadly. So put that back in there. And then, speaking of Anakin starfighters, we also have his custom starfighter. I forget, uh, this was in some Clone Wars um, episode, I think. Uh, I forget when, but uh, definitely uh, like the newer minifig better than uh, than this one. Um, the hair, the slick back hair does not work for Anakin. The tousled hair definitely works better. Um, I forget, I don't remember any of the details about this set, how much it costs or anything, but I think I definitely like a lot of things about it better just in the overall design. Um, it's got those curved pieces on the side of the cockpit similar to uh, Obi-Wan's Jedi Starfighter that I like a lot more. Um, it is interesting in that it has this little guy down here that you use to eject the astromech, which is a fun little play feature uh, that would have been cool to include. I'm looking at this astromech and I guess it might be a little crooked, but it's definitely a lot less noticeable than all of these R2-D2s. You know, obviously there's a lot of different uh, things about this Jedi Starfighter. You know, it's got like the souped up uh, blasters on the side and the souped up engines on the front. Uh, so obviously it's not like a pure uh, apples to apples comparison. Although it does have some, a lot of fun features where, you know, it's got all these spring loaded launchers and it has extra places to store the ammo for that. It does have it clips for the lightsaber and the handle on here. So definitely some good features there. Uh, whereas this version does not have any of the spring-loaded launchers. Uh, so it only has the one clip for the lightsaber handle. And it does have the extra storage in here as well, which I thought was pretty nice. And then of course, you know, you have the evolution uh, of this version, which you know, it does, it adds the, uh, has the, uh, the clips for the lightsaber and the extra ammo, so that's nice. Um, I do like the mechanism for opening the cockpit. Not a fan of the fact that, like, Anakin has to be leaning way far back. Um, I will say that for two sets, you know, these are both $30 sets. Um, I feel like this one, you know, the older model Starfighter feels like a more solid set. Obviously, it's, you know, bigger. Um, but when you, yeah, when you look at this, like, it seems very empty. Um, and, you know, it's just like a lot of plates stacked on top of each other. Even though it technically has one more piece than the Delta version. Um, but out of the two, I'd probably go with this one. Um, I also like... The, the stud shooters versus the spring-loaded launchers and you like how these stick out uh, the back there and are a bit of a pain. Um, I think the, the droid socket and the fact that they had to make it symmetric uh, looks kind of silly in the end. Uh, so, yeah, not, not my favorite there. Uh, what was the box coming in? I thought they were radiator panels. Oh, is that what they are? I always thought that they were kind of like... Um, you know, for like uh, predecessors to the TIE Fighters, I thought they were solar panels. But I guess that makes more sense because I always, you know, I always thought they were solar panels, but I always wondered why they faced inside and not outside. So it would make a lot more sense if they're like radiator panels. So thank you for that correction there, Box Commander. Then finally, we've got Yoda Starfighter, uh, which has the advantage of having been the, the cheapest of the three the three sets at $25 to $30. Um, had a lot of Technic builds. Uh, I do like the wings and how they unfold. Um, so there's definitely a lot to like about it as far as things I don't like. R2-D2 looks kind of empty. Like, 
it looks like he's gonna fall out of the socket back there. Um, there uh, was no, no spot to attach Yoda's lightsaber, no spot for the extra piece of spring-loaded ammo. Um, like looking at the bottom, maybe not a lot of room here. Like they, if they had tried to attach it up here, that would have been very visible from the front profile. So since it is a smaller ship, I guess I can see that, yeah, maybe that would have had a harder time incorporating that into there. Um, the, the bigger thing are these stupid red two module axles. When in Anakin Starfighter, we had like plenty of black ones. Uh, didn't seem to be an issue for them to use black ones there, but they couldn't use black ones here. So uh, yeah, those are our three sets we built today. Let's get these other ones out of here. Look, I never said it made sense, but there's a lot of things in Star Wars Box Commander that don't make any sense. You gotta give me that one. Like droid sockets that defy physics. And our last winner for today is Brickus, who has won a Jin Urso buildable figure. So congrats, Brickus. Gonna turn off our giveaway. All right, so of our three sets today, what are my, my final thoughts? If I had to recommend someone which one to get, I would probably go with Anakin Jedi Starfighter. I know most of the, you know, two of these sets aren't widely available anymore. Um, this one is only a couple years old. I'm not sure what its prices are on the secondary market, but I think overall it is probably my favorite of the three. Um, just for like being, for, for the overall design, um, it's, a, it's probably a little ugly from the bottom compared to the other two, but I like that it has the storage for the stud shooter ammos and for Anakin's lightsaber. Um, I like that the droid socket works pretty well. Um, and uh, overall, you know, it feels like the, the biggest of, of the three, which, you know, it is, even though technically it has the fewest pieces of any of them. Um, but those pieces are used to great effect to create a nice, solid, sushable ship. Um, hard to say what the runner-up is. I would say the two Ada Starfighters are, are pretty evenly matched as far as pros and cons. Um, I'd say overall, I liked the build more on Yoda Starfighter because it's got all that Technic. Um, I do like the you know the cool wings and stuff that work really well. Um, you know the and it's it's main disadvantages or main pitfalls in my mind are those those red axles and the lack of uh, lightsaber storage. Uh, so if they were able to fix that, excuse me, that would have uh, bumped this one up to a solid second place. Um, and then this guy definitely an interesting design, but yeah, that the droid socket um, dilemma definitely hurts it uh, a bit. And then uh, it just, you know, it's supposed to be a sleek and slim starfighter, you know, very like dagger shaped cutting through space and very small and excels at that. But then you you look at this and it's like, is this worth $30? Is this worth the same amount that this is worth? And it just does not feel like it. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's its mean disadvantage. Like it's a nice set. You know, I understand the set designers couldn't do much about the droid socket. They had to kind of work within um, the canon of, of Star Wars and the design of the ship in Star Wars, and they did the best they could. Um, but, you know, overall, it just does not feel like it is uh, worth the $30. And I'd say the real loser overall is R2-D2, who's featured in all three of these sets, and all three of them had some horrible printing on the dome which I feel like I just have not seen in the past. And it's crazy because these sets span four years, you know, 2017, 2018, and 2020. And I feel like I've not noticed, especially the, the crookedness on, on this, on the one from uh, the first Anakin Starfighter, I've not noticed anything that crooked ever. I'm gonna have to go look at my other R2-D2s and uh, do some, com some comparisons. Uh, maybe we'll post a picture on, on Instagram later comparing as many different R2-D2s as I can to see 
how crooked they all are. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's what I've got for today. So thank you guys for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed the stream. Like I said, we'll be back uh, next time with uh, some Star Wars Micro Fighters. I think to balance out the fact that uh, people aren't big fans of the Micro Fighters, which I get, um, we'll do like a whole lot of giveaways uh, for that when we do that stream. So like every Micro Fighter we build, we're gonna give away a set. I think we've got like eight to 12 Micro Fighters. So if you want some free Lego, this will be that'll be a, a stream to come watch or at least come sign up for the giveaways for. Um, so hopefully that'll be sometime next weekend. And then we'll be looking at your feedback from uh, this weekend and, and next weekend at the other sets we've got in the queue from my personal collection that we'll be building over the holidays and probably into January, especially since some of those are uh, quite large sets and will li likely take a couple streams to build. So uh, thanks again for watching everyone. Hope you enjoyed the stream today. Uh, we'll see you hopefully sometime next weekend. And uh, until then, uh, happy building, stay safe, wear a mask, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Bye, everyone.